Good morning guys, it is 5.30 a.m. on Friday, October 28th. Yep, uh, I just finished editing and I'm currently uploading an arm day video from two days ago that you guys will see later today. I got up at 3.45 this morning. I weighed in at 181.2, yes! So I wanted to push my weight back over 180. Uh, obviously that's just water coming back on. The only thing I've done differently is I've started doing a post-workout shake again. Basically just a about seven to 800 calorie shake. Lots of carbohydrates, lots of protein. And that's bumped my weight up significantly. I mean, I weighed in as low as 176 this past week, I think Monday. And um, it's time to bring that weight back on. So what I'm hoping to do is get to 185 and maintain my weight there. Uh, for me, that's easily done. I can do that, just kind of splash some water back on my body and hold there. Uh, I see no reason to go much higher than that. Uh, I want to maintain good conditioning. And with this new programming I'm doing, I actually anticipate some really nice body composition changes. So I'm excited about that. Uh, today is going to be a chest and calves workout. I'm going to try to do calves twice a week and abs twice a week, but the way I'm going to do that is by putting calves on my upper push days and then putting abs on my upper pull days. So we'll see how that goes today. Uh, that was my most popular video from last week, so we'll try to make it happen again. Exercise order is going to be slightly different. I still, I always keep the same exercises a lot of times. I just like to switch the order depending on what kind of mood I'm in and what kind of goal I have for the day. So I have clients all the way until 10 a.m. this morning. After that, we're going to get home. I'm probably just going to quickly drink down my pre-workout, go hit the gym fasted, come back to the house, try to eat a meal around between noon and 1 p.m. I'll see you guys then. All right, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Zach, back with another workout video. We're just going to jump straight into it. I'll make this nice and brief and concise for you guys. Uh, so today I decided to start with all my pec fly variations before I did any sort of pressing. My biggest weakness of my chest is the fullness and the thickness all the way to my sternum. So starting with the pec fly is crucial because this is where you actually get your arms to adduct and come together, which... The, the main part people miss when they only press for chest development is this adduction component where you're actually squeezing your chest together. And as with most of us, I have a very underdeveloped upper chest, so that's why starting with the low to high cable flies, um, in my opinion, is essential and something most people should be doing first with their routine, whether it's an incline press or an incline chest fly like this. So I started there. Once again, the reps are pretty high. If I go too heavy and drop my reps down to 10 to 12 reps, I use way too much biceps. You can see I'm very bicep dominant. Uh, they're still working here, but I can grip the handles a little bit less, and that gives me a better chest contraction on the flies. So after the low to high, I went high to low. Now this is where you're going to be strongest, sort of mimics a decline press. Once again, um, I'm trying to actually not go through as much range of motion as I used to. I found that I was really slamming my the anterior part of my shoulder by letting my elbows go way behind my body. So I've been sh purposely short, shortening excuse me, that range of motion and I feel no pain in my shoulders and I feel more of a pump in my chest rather than my anterior delts. Uh, so right here I take a split stance as you can see just because the weight's a little heavier and it's going to pull me backwards if I don't. But then right here, this is the mid cable pec fly. This is my favorite variation of the pec flies. And I actually stand with a normal stance, shoulder width apart, and then I lean forward as the cable pulls me back. And then I lean back and tuck my chin as I go and squeeze my chest. And I feel like that gives me a better contraction overall through my chest. Still trying to drive my elbows together as well and then I'm basically going until right there I'm going until I can barely get the handles together so after that I moved on to some pressing I decided to do the incline hammer strength press today uh, you can see right here I think this is my third or fourth set I was just pyramiding up in weight and then I decided to do a drop set 
The reason I did drop sets today, we are going to see multiple ones, is because I was a little bit short on time. I had to go to work right after this. And, um, you know, on one hand, I'm being strapped for time frustrates me. And on the other hand, it makes me turn up the intensity. So uh, Parkinson's law basically say, says the, you, the amount of work you're going to get done is relative to the amount of time you have. Uh, so right here, I feel like I'm getting more density in my workouts. Like I'm getting more of a training effect just because a majority of my reps are hard. And I really have to push rather than coasting 80%, you know, 75, 80% of the reps and then the last 25% being hard. This feels like 75% of the reps are really, really hard. Uh, so right here, I haven't done the converging chest press in a while. You guys, if you've been following my videos from the last gym I was at, uh, you guys have seen this machine. I like it because the convergence, once again, works your inner pec a little bit more because your uh, hands are coming closer together at the end of the movement. Now, all these drop sets were quadruple drop sets. And you can see I don't immediately go into the next part of the drop set. It's usually about 10 to 15 seconds to adjust the weight find my grip once again and honestly if I didn't take 10 to 15 seconds I think these reps instead of being six to eight would have been about two so just a short little break some people might call this like uh, rest pause training or you know DC dog crap training uh, I know there's also another method called myo reps out there which is a pretty cool method where you stick with the same weight, you do as many as you can and then you sort of like pick a number that's half of that and you keep hitting it for as many sets as you want until you reach a goal of number of reps. Uh, after that, I moved on to machine dips. Once again, with the drop sets, I always opt for, a lot of times I opt for machines over body weight or free weights just because it's safer and I can really control the weight selection to still hit my target number of reps. Right here, you can see I tuck my chin, I lean forward a lot. This is for more pec activation. If I wanted more tricep activation, I would sit more upright and I wouldn't go quite as deep here. You can see this machine gives you a really nice stretch, and like I said, leaning forward, tucking your chin a little bit will help with that. Now, some people are going to say, you know, tucking your chin, leaning forward too much, all of that is, um, you know, you should do it with perfect form, each one. You know, I really do try to do 90% of my reps with perfect form, but... Those last 10%, you know, where you're really pushing it, I allow my body to do what it naturally does to get the weight up or down. And uh, it's it's those grinding reps that really pay off and make your training more effective. So I'm going to continue to stick with that. After that, I decided to do bodyweight push-ups. Once again, push-ups are good for shoulder health. And, you know, for me, I don't do enough push-ups. I do lots of flies and lots of pressing where your shoulder blades are sort of locked together rather than um, moving in and out like they naturally do. So, all right, here I jump back on the pec deck. Just once again, big squeeze. You know, with these, the reason I do the pec deck still on top of cable pec flies is because you're more stable here. Uh, so I, I tend to get maybe an equal amount of stretch, but since you are stable, you don't have to worry about the weight pulling you back like you do with the cable pec fly. So that's why I still include this. These last five ones, you can see I actually touch and let the weight rest for a second. I find that the start of the movement when you do that really allows you to get a strong pec contraction right away. And it allows you to continue the set because even that second rest allows you to recover just enough to squeeze out an extra five reps. After that, I moved on to a light dumbbell squeeze press. This actually just came to mind. It's, I was just free, free handing at this point. Uh, these felt good, you know, and I, I did feel it in my chest, but I did feel it a ton in my triceps. Like like I said in previous videos, I'm very tricep dominant, very connected with my triceps. And of course, I mean, it's obvious that you feel it in the triceps because you're tucking your elbows all the way to your sides rather than your elbows being flared out. But I was glad I touched on this exercise, and it's something I may include as a chest finisher in the future. As I do this commentary, my chest is pretty sore from this workout a couple days later and then once again i was freestyling here i did like a dumbbell uppercut and um you know i did feel it in my chest i feel it in my anterior delts too uh, but I, I did enjoy this exercise and it's something i might continue to do towards the end of my chest workout just to mix it up uh, so that's going to be the end of the video guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up also don't forget to subscribe to the channel the channel is growing i'm very excited about that i appreciate your guys' support so until next time, guys, I am out. I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. Take care.